we were not fan favorites. And um, I just got to say that she would look at me and go, this is way too far. Afternoon tea with J E double F J A double R E double T. See what we did there? That's beautiful. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm finishing my morning coffee, but we're going to get into our tea and crumpets. Afternoon so, tea. So British, so official. Well, we thought you're making all this effort to come over. That's yeah, so nice. We of should you. do Thank it. you. Welcome back to the UK. No guitar shots for you today. Well, that's, that's good to know. I'm I've... saving them. Before we get done with this interview, we're going to have to kind of create a, a, a hit list, if you will. We'll oh, I'm down for that. You want to? Down for that. Okay. If we could put Adam Pacitti at the top of the hit list, that'd be brilliant. Who? Adam Pacitti, he's our boss. Oh, uh, yeah. no, 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 no. Octolic's a friend of mine. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. fine, yeah. fine. Um, Prince, first... Prince Harry? Just a little teaser. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's let's get, carry on. We'll get to the end of it. Harry on the hit list. Excellent. Now, <laughs> <laughs> um, earliest memory of, of coming over here. Oh, boy. You, boy. Do that. you, you answer that and I'll be mother. 1993. Oh. Yep, a year after Summer, Stam, Summer Slam at Wembley. So, but I think, uh, I really, um, you know, 1994, uh, we spent a lot of time here in, back in the, company that I used to work for, you might have heard of them, WWF. Rings a, no, bell. Rings a bell? The Wildlife Fund. But anyway, we, trans, we uh, yeah, the Wildlife Fund. We <laughs> uh, had, had a um, uh, lot of tours over here. I got stuck here. I shouldn't say stuck here because we enjoyed it, but uh, something happened at uh, a political thing, but they shut the runways down at Heathrow. There was a political, something from Ireland, and I don't know. The, the airport was shut down for like a day and a half and it backed up a lot of flights. So me, Kevin, Ash, and a few others were not stuck in here in London. We were grateful that we had a nice warm bed. But no, uh, I spent a lot of time. Can you I'll get inside. I spent a lot of time here in London through the years. We're very proud of the crowds that we have here in the UK. And rightly so. <clears throat> very lively bunch. Um, yes. Obviously, that's your earliest memory. Is there a favorite moment from the UK? Oh, boy. Um, you know... Speaking of Wembley Stadium, but I'll say that's going to be my new favorite memory when history's be, made. Yeah. Wembley Arena, uh, me and Kurt Angle, <laughs> that's, that's one of my favorites. Oh, yes. Uh, the, the tours that I've been on, whether it is WCW, WWF back in the day, TNA, uh, independent shows, I'm very, uh, I'm a huge fan of British wrestling and always have been. Um, you know, from Scotland all the way to the coast down south. I've, I've uh, wrestled in little towns, big towns, and all that. But no, you were you were half joking, but you were a lively crowd. The British fan base, and I've said this, they're very very passionate, without question, and they're very very knowledgeable. You 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 you, you Brits know what you like, and probably more importantly, know what you don't like, and you let it be known. We certainly do. Um, to wind it back a little bit, uh, I want to very quickly touch on sort of. Uh, the early years of Jeff Jarrett, because you were a basketball stand. Oh, here we go. Yes. Uh, so you were, you were, you know, there was a point where basketball could have been your future. Do you think that would have been the case had wrestling not come along in the way that it did? Absolutely not. Oh. <laughs> no. Okay. No. Um, I was, a, I would say, a really good high school player, college player, decent, started every game. But I knew literally about three or four games in, uh, my freshman year. You know what? Wrestling doesn't uh, sound so bad after all. But no, I loved it. But I, I knew, young boy, I grew up. I love basketball, but I love wrestling. And that was my summer job. And my grandmother, I got to help her promote shows at a, you know, I'm 12, 13, 14 years of age, and my dad. So uh, I, I was ready. Uh, but, but I do. I, I love, to this day, I'm a basketball junkie. I'll watch, it doesn't matter. Women, men, high school, college, pro, doesn't matter. You're a basketball guy all the way. I you probably enjoy it more because you're not in it. You can enjoy love, it as a spectator. My daughter is uh, going to play college ball next year. Oh, you must, it, be, you must it, be buzzing. I love it. I love it. So, yeah, I'm a basketball guy. You went into the wrestling, as we know, because we're here. We've seen uh, the real Double J. We've seen the chosen one. <laughs> uh, we've seen the king of the mountain. Where did Simply Irresistible Jeff Jarrett come from? Simply irresistible. Uh, Come on, Jeff. You have almost Conrad Thompson to blame for bringing chat that. Chat me up on this, Jeff. Jerry, go chat <laughs> me up. So back in the day, 
um, you know, before we came up with our own theme music, you know, and I started in the late 80s, early 90s, you just kind of got to pick whatever pop music you wanted to come out back in the cassette days. Kids, do you even know what a cassette is? No. I know what a cassette is. <laughs> but anyway, just about. plopping in the uh, old jam box, the boom box, and um, I went through a, a series of songs. Remember uh, the cameo song, Word Up? Word Up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Simply Irresistible was a song that, uh, and you wanted to look, and again, th- th- this takes me back so much because uh, it's kind of where you learn that the first seven to ten seconds, you got to capture the emotion yeah. uh, of the crowd. And and um, Simply Irresistible, the man, uh, he knew how to write a riff. And it, it came out hot, came out strong. But uh, if I could only tell you the uh, off-air conversations that me and Conrad have had about Simply they <laughs> Conrad and the team love to give me a hard time about that song. <laughs> You, of course, we know you as, as country music star Jeff Jarrett. And uh, the, the first time you walked out uh, on a w, in a WWF arena, striking attire that we've, you've talked about on My World. But what was the inspiration behind it? You know, in the creation of the character, um, it was something that what does a country music star wear as a wrestling outfit? Is it boots and tights? No. So I wanted something over the top. The character was obviously an extension of my personality, but it was larger than life and spelling my name and arrogant and cocky. And so that was the mindset. And if you kind of go back to the 80s and really even to the 70s, country music stars that really stood out uh, with their outfits, they, you know, it was loud and, and lots of different colors and lots of rhinestones and that. So that was kind of the, the, the mindset of do a larger than life wrestling outfit that fits the character. And the fact that we're still talking about it to this day, whether you hated it mm-hmm. or loved it, it, it struck a chord because, you know, walking down, and I think that's part of the magic of, 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 of that Double J character is that, the over-the-top interviews and the outfits, but I think my in-ring work, people immediately went, man, he's an asshole, but he can wrestle a little bit. <laughs> I think that's part of the magic. Country music, obviously, a big part of your life. Taylor Swift used to sit your kids. How about that? That's amazing. Have you been to see her yet? In, <laughs> doing, a, doing a big stadium thing. You should ring her on the night that she's nearby and go, can I book you to... <laughs> She may be busy causing earthquakes in Seattle. Do you see that? I news? saw that. Like, like literally on the Richter scale, Taylor Swift fans. Yes. Terrifying. Swifties, as they Swifties. Yes. Uh, Hendersonville, Co- Tennessee. Three people famous from Hendersonville. Well, there's more than that. I'm kidding. But <laughs> Tommy Rich, one. You know who Tommy Rich is. I know Tommy Rich. Yeah, I'm Bob kidding. Rich. Taylor Swift and Jeff Jarrett. There you go. This guy named Johnny Cash, is, he moved there as well. Vaguely heard of him. Okay. Uh, with country music being a big part of your life, I want to take a moment and test you on it, Okay. These are either real country music songs or songs I've made up. Okay. Okay. Get your tongue out of my mouth because I'm kissing you goodbye. Not. That's real. No, it's not. It's real. Ray Stevens. Not the, not the wrestler. <laughs> she was only the sergeant's daughter, but she knew what Reggie meant. Not buying it. That one's fake. I made okay. That one up. Uh, Mama, get the hammer. There's a fly on Papa's head. <laughs> That's not true. That one's true. That one's true. Homer and Jethro. Did you Google wackiest Maybe. country music songs? Yes, you did. Uh, I'm in the back of my truck. You're at the front of my mind. True. Made that one up. God <laughs> almighty. Come on. One more. You're the reason our kids are ugly. <laughs> true. That one's true. Yes. Conway Twitty and Loretta Lynn on that one. Yes. Lovely little tune. Lovely little tune. Yes. You're hated. <laughs> you're great. I, I just. You're great. Though I ain't I great. The, 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 you Google that. That's uh. Jeff Jarrett said I'm great. We'll take yeah. that. That's a win. With um, the tea, that nice hot tea. You're welcome. Beautiful. Conrad Thompson said you're hated in every language. Yes, true fact. Quite an honor. Isn't it though? And I've seen. Do you hate me? Huh? Have you hated me before? I have hated you before. Thank you. Defo hated you before. Um, not today, obvs. Um, but. I've seen you getting into moments where you've been pelted with rubbish and people have grabbed you. Yes. And that's the sign of like, I've got him, I've got him. Has there ever been a moment that springs to your mind where you've gone, I think I've gone too far here? Yeah. Yes. Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, there was an era about, I don't know, 2011, 12, 13 in that era. Uh, 
Karen, my wife, we would go down there. So the king and the queen of the mountain, we were not fan favorites. And um, I just got to say that she would look at me and go, this is way too far. This is going way too far. So they used to have security and dress up a car and it looked like I was leaving and we would go out another car on the other side of the building. So yeah, um, they didn't like it when I threw tortillas at them. For whatever reason, mm. they didn't like that. That was the moment where you thought this is probably a bit too much. Yes, a maybe. Bit. Yeah. You've been part of, I think, more wrestling factions than I think anybody. You know. You I think? think? I think so. You know, the Horsemen, the NWO, the Bullet Club. You've had your own in Planet <laughs> Jarrett, and you've been part of Immortal and um, New Blood, Magnificent Seven. Look at you. Um, loads. But was there a faction that you always wanted to link up with? That you, I didn't. That you didn't. It's a shorter list. Yeah, I, I can't think of one. I mean, I sort of checked all the boxes from the Horseman to the NWO. Um, no, it's, I, I think I checked all the boxes. What as makes far as... a good wrestling faction? Chemistry. Hmm. Uh, the, with, without question, and I say that, me and you are having a lot of fun. Boy, I could spend the next couple of hours because you don't take anything serious. Down to your mm -hmm. stale sandwiches. Uh, How dare sandwiches. stale, sir? I bought these at least an hour ago. Okay. <laughs> uh Chemistry. Go ahead and take a bite. Look at you. Oh, mm -hmm. delicious. Yeah, right. I'm going to stick to my black tea. <laughs> um, ke uh, chemistry. Mm. You, you have to have, you know, the, the, you know, I don't think my current group right now you'd call us a faction, but it's really a unique group. The fact that we haven't been named yet on camera, I think kind of adds to the mystique. But Satnam, Jay Lethal, Sanjay Dutt, Karen Jarrett, myself, it's it's a, it's you put it on paper and you're like ah, I'm not sure that's gonna click. But when you kind of see it in action, mm. it clicks. So that's all to me. It's all out of real chemistry. You have this is a like it's not say a renaissance because you've not really been anywhere. But you've just you you are quite literally a needle mover when it comes to AEW Rampage among AEW in general. Has this sort of Jarrett resurgence come as a surprise to you? Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. I'd be lying, uh, and I've never lied before. Have I? You are the most honest man in the room called Jeff. Period. Mm -hmm. I like that. No. Um, it, it, you know, at this stage in my career, um, and I've had some, some of the highest of highs and some of the lowest of lows, uh, but, you know, you, you kind of look at the last year. Matter of fact, today is the one-year anniversary of Ric Flair's last match. Uh, Gosh, it's been a year already. A year to the day. Wow. Uh, but when you kind of look at the last 12 months, and a little prior to that, last year from Game Changer Wrestling to the NWA to WWE SummerSlam in my hometown at the stadium and this, and then you fast forward and me and you here talking about w Wembley 100, AEW all in. It is surreal. It's, it, I, I do not... I am stopping and smelling the roses. I don't take anything for granted. I, uh, matter of fact, um, as uh, my wife was, I was going to bed, obviously, afternoon yesterday, me and my wife were talking, and um, she knew that I was excited. And look, I've done so many media days. It's, it's part of the business. But I, I can genuinely say I'm really, really grateful. Uh, but, you know, if we were going to have 40,000 at Wembley Stadium, fantastic. Me and you are sitting here, and we're a month away from literally all in making professional wrestling history. It's going to sell out. The tickets keep moving at a pace, folks. It's you, You've got less than a month to buy your ticket, and it's something that being a third-generation promoter, to be a part of the most attended professional wrestling event in history— and my grandmother started selling wrestling tickets in 1946. That takes in a lot of ground. It's special. It, it really is special. You can tell because when you talk about it, like your eyes yes. glisten. And you can see that. And I think that's amazing. How, how because in your current role, uh, you are in the weeds on, on live events and promoting and stuff at AEW. How intricately involved were you in making Wembley happen? You know, uh, don't even put me in the stratosphere. To, to me, look to one person. Because... 
you know, hey, I'm going to go do the O2. I'm going to go Manchester. I'm going to do a six, six, seven, six, seven city tour, you know, whatever European tour. For Tony to make the decision and say, hey, I'm going to run Wembley. Oh, that's great. The arena, we'll sell it out in three hours. No, 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 no. We're running the stadium. Uh, you you really have to clear everyone back and say he made the decision. It's that's to me uh, again. I, I think I'm either blessed or cursed, but I'll say <laughs> blessed sitting in the promoter's chair before. Without great without risk, there is no reward. But stadium is great risk. But look at the great reward coming. It's really really special. And the team that goes with it. Uh, you know, we're sitting here in the Live Nation UK offices. That they are the best of the best. And, and look, I, I could go on about our production crew and our roster and everything that goes with it. The brand, uh, you know, I came on board officially last November. Uh, it's something that I'm very in tune with, just how strong the brand is. There's a lot, that, a lot of times when people sit down to speak with yourself, they always say, oh, what could wrestlers be doing now that they used to back in the day? But I want to twist it. Like, what do you think wrestlers do today that you would have benefited from when you were coming through? Like, what are they? What are modern wrestlers doing more of or well or better you of? You know what a pet peeve of mine is? Go on. When I hear a veteran, either a wrestler or a fan, hey, back in my day. Back in my day. That, that, that I detest that. It Again, we're not going back in time. You're not changing. So... To evolve as a promoter, to evolve as a talent, and to evolve as a fan. Um, if you don't like today's modern, current product, that's okay, and you have the right to voice it, but we're not going back in time. The one thing that I think has radically, radically changed our industry, it's also changed life, is this. Mm -hmm. To be able to connect through social media 24-7, 365, me and you are going to do this wonderful promo, I'm having tea with you, you're gonna chop it up on Cultaholic and we'll see this the next 20 or 30 days. It's not like doing a TV interview and hey, you gotta watch the morning show or the afternoon show and that's kinda it. Mm. So I, I just think the advantages in today's market are through the roof. Uh, if you wanna get into, break it down, the ins and outs of the in-ring product and all that, like any sport, today's athletes are in better shape, Better condition, more athletic. Uh, it, it just the game progressively gets better and better and better. So I, you know, there was a reason I was up at 5 a.m. working out uh, in the gym this morning uh, to stay in shape. Uh, because if you don't dial in, the business will pass you by like that. And it comes back to like to go back to how we started talking about simply irresistible Jeff Jarrett, of course, because <laughs> that's why we're all here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You said like you've got to you've got to get yourself across in that snapshot of time. TikTok and that is no different. Like you have seconds to grab seconds. people and off we go. Yeah, it's not much has changed since then. Um, in your role now, obviously Wembley is front of mind, locked and focused to coming back here on the twenty seventh. Beyond there, how what would you like to see in your time in your current role in AEW? What would you like to action? What would you like to see going forward in AEW? From a business perspective, yeah. the, as it from a promoter and a business, yeah, yeah. The, the brand just continued to grow. Our, our non televised live events, house shows, if you will, house rules. Uh, I want that business to continue to grow. That you know, uh, when I came on board, collision wasn't even thought of. That radically changed the strategy because Dynamite obviously is on Wednesday nights, and the, the weekends were going to be wide open for house rules. Now Collision's in the mix, which doubles our primetime coverage, just continues to go to the brand. So now we're looking at Fridays and Sundays and, you know, obviously Thursdays. But, you know, the, the brand growing overall, and that's from video games to house rules to marketing initiatives, um, obviously content promotions. But, but the, the, the most simplistic is for the brand to continue to grow uh, because we live in a really big world and, you know, the U.S. market, and the UK market, that's just two markets. There's a, it's a, it's a massive audience out there. Uh, you are a busy man. I know you've got other bits to do today, but I'll leave you with this. Uh, let's wind it back one more time. Guitar shots, which you want to know. Prince Harry didn't work for you? No. I wasn't going to ask you about the guitar shots, because we spoke a few months ago and you gave me your top three kabongs. Oh, 
One of them was Beetlejuice. I remember oh, of one. course. Yeah. I was going back to you, you know, obviously basketball was never the thing, but if you can go back and speak to Jeff Jarrett, basketball, basketball standout, and you could go back in time with all the knowledge that you have now, and you could give younger Jeff a bit of advice to take forward. What advice would you give younger Jeff? Don't drink alcohol. <laughs> and I say that no, completely strange. serious. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a different era, different generation. But uh, the the advice, um, you know what? Good question. I'll say this, but you only learn this with time. Relax. Stop. Smell the roses. Don't get yourself wrapped around one match or one promo or one event. Just stay the course. And don't hang on to yesterday because you can't change it. You know the serenity prayer? Uh, accept Lord, the things. Help me the things I, I can't cannot change. Accept, yeah, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can. Wisdom to know the difference. Wisdom to know the difference. The wisdom is you can't do anything about yesterday. Matter of fact, you can do nothing about it except learn from it and then move on. So the advice would be relax, chill, take what you can from yesterday. It, was, it happened exactly the way it was supposed to happen and move forward to tomorrow. Do you want to take some sandwiches to go? <laughs> Talk about, th- about me taking things this. forward. Do you think Mr. Bobby Blobby would eat that? Um, I think he would probably agree to it. What about Mr. Tumble? Um, I think Mr. Tumble would probably have a bit of that. You think so? Yeah, should I take it to them? No. <laughs> Jeff Jarrett, a pleasure, sir. Chin chin. Happy days. You don't say cheers on tea, do you? Can do. If you want to. You're you can say what you like, Jeff. You're Jarrett. great. You're great. You're great. No, you're great. No, you're great. No, you're great. No, you're, you're great. great, Jeff. You're great. Beautiful.